we're really giving it the best that we've got. There's never enough time. There's never enough money. There's never enough energy to do the things that you really want to do to the fullest. Hold up. There were five things I had to really acknowledge and face in order to live my dream. Hey everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the reality or the truths about living your actual dream. So everybody wants to live a dream, right? Who doesn't like we all have these great ideas of what our dream life would look like. And if we follow what's popular on social media and what's trending nowadays, that dream almost looks like living in the dream place, whether it's a vacation spot or having a nice home, having a nice yard, having a nice garden to play in, having a happy, healthy family, or maybe it's that perfect love life or that ideal fitness or physique. Ultimately at the end of the day, no matter what it looks like, it just seems like the dream life is having the freedom the freedom to have the time, money, energy, resources to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And I think at the end of the day, this is what we believe is going to lead us to happiness. So while I know a lot of us are out there really striving, we're really giving it the best that we've got, right? If you're like me, we've got our fitness routine down. We're trying to be the best people that we're trying to be. But for most of us, it's a struggle. Most people are really struggling to barely survive. Most people feel like they're drowning day in, day out. And while their lives touch on some of these areas of their dream, it doesn't seem to be quite whole. There's never enough time. There's never enough money. There's never enough energy to do the things that you really want to do to the fullest, to see it really manifest to its greatest expression, that ultimate dream reality, the epitome, the like hallmark time where you know that you know you are living living your dream, you are living your best, and this is it. You have made it. So I'm going to reveal to you why it is that most people don't know how to get there or they're not feeling this way. The reason is you don't know the reality that it takes to actually live your dream. Hold up. The reality. Isn't the dream the reality? Isn't this what we're supposed to be doing? Look, I thought the same way too. When I was younger, I had huge aspiring dreams. I'm such an optimist. I love idealistic thinking, but there were five things I had to really acknowledge and face in order to live my dream. And I'm still working on this. So there might be more than five, but I'm going to share these five with you today. So the first reality is that you are going to have to choose. We often think that living a dream life constitutes of everything that we want and imagine and dream and desire. Like we're going to have all the free time, money, and energy to just do it all. But the truth is, even if you're retired with all the energy in the world, you are still limited to time. And there's only a couple things you can really choose to focus on to prioritize in order to maximize the complete fruition of that ideology or manifestation of that dream. So this is how my two or three max priorities look like. It's my family. It's my business and it is myself. Notice how not fancy that is. It is literally boiled down to the core most important things. And those three things occupy the majority of my time. Now I might be able to sprinkle in a couple other hobbies like every other week or so, but outside of those three core things that really occupy my life, it's really hard to achieve, excel and master those areas in such a way that I feel completely fulfilled and whole. If I start to focus on other things, this means cutting out all the extra things, the time, money, energy, soaking obligations, like being head of the PTA or being the little league coach, attending every single family event or toddler birthday that's on the schedule, getting together with every friend you feel obligated to, to festivals, events, and other social activity, hosting Easter or planning the spring break group trip this year. All these extra things that derail you from your time, attention, and energy on the things that you truly want to master and the things that you want to focus on. People who live their dream reality are really good at cutting those extras out, which leads me to reality number two, which is having to let go of things. If you want to really live your dream life, you have to cut out all the excess that doesn't fulfill that reality. This means an excess of distractions, entertainment, people, hobbies, things that might be fun or even add a little value that simply doesn't fit the bill. This was a hard one for me because there are certain things that we do as a family together, like joining martial arts that I had to excuse myself participating from. There are even certain friends that I really enjoy hanging out with, but because the type of activities that they like to do don't match with mine, it was taking extra time and energy out of my schedule to be able to participate with them. Now I'm not saying cut all these things out permanently, but choose wisely what it is you're spending your time and energy on. It is so easy to fill in all the blank spaces or all the spaces 
spaces where things can wait or be put on the back burner with all these extra things because you're getting a serious case of FOMO. And really what you're missing out on is actually creating, embodying, and leveraging your extra time and energy to truly create and be 100% in that dream reality that you've always wished for. Number three is kind of like number two, and it's that you don't really have time for anything else. We often talk about wanting to have all the time, money, and energy for things, but what we really want is the time, money, and energy for the things that we really wanna do. We don't realize that we spend it already or we pre-obligate ourselves, indebt ourselves to other things because we refuse to do number one and two. So number three gets its own category because when you really start embodying realities one and two, you start to realize that you really actually don't have time. When you you start choosing to use your time towards the things that you truly love, that are truly priorities, and you start letting go of the things that don't, you start to see how this really makes huge differences. It's like moving into a different parallel that you start to exist in, and you realize that you actually really don't have time for all the extra stuff. But the extra stuff out of social obligations, hobbies, interests, and the things that could distract you are things for like other people's drama. Even your own drama, you start to not have time for. I remember one of the first times it dawned on me and it just sort of happened naturally where I was having some sort of conflict with a client and they were having a problem with something, complete misunderstanding. And I remember thinking, I could really get upset about this, but I just don't have time. Like I have to just get it done. We'll fix it. We'll figure it out. I gotta go because I had a full schedule of other things that I really wanted to get to and do. I got tired of making excuses for myself, making excuses to validate my bad moods or justifying why I wanted to take time to pout or have some self-pity, even if the situations were truly justifiable. It's like you're having so much fun or you're so rewarded with the things that actually really matter that everything else starts to matter a whole lot less. At the same time, if you choose to keep the problems and you choose to keep the bad moods, then you kind of choose to keep that level of living versus stepping into and becoming the person that you need to be in order to create your dream reality, which is number four. You have to become it. And this is beyond fake it till you make it. I love the idea of fake it till you make it when you are in a situation where you lack confidence and you really need to like fake it so that you can show up. You can show up to perform, whether it be for yourself or for other people. Like let's say you are putting on a performance because you're a dancer and you need to fake it and you need to go out there, act like you're confident, own the dance and just appease the crowd because they paid for those tickets and that's your job. You can fake it and fool other people, but you will never truly make it until like Jim Quick says, you face it. Because the problem is so many of us are trying to fabricate this dream reality on the outside to convince ourselves that our life is good, to convince others that we are valid for living the way that we live and expressing that in the way that we express it. However, you might be fooling people on the outside, the one person you can't fool is yourself. So until you can truly prioritize yourself and your dreams, until you can truly let go of the obligations you impose on yourself and you refuse, make a clear cut decision that you don't have time for any of the other stuff that's going to weigh you down, inhibit, or keep you away from this dream. Until then, you will continue to be the person that holds on to the excuses, to the reasons, to the distractions, and temporary dopamine highs. This is the hardest reality of living the dream of all. At least it was for me. Because you truly have to take full responsibility for everything in your life, even the things that are not your fault. And dreams, they're not free and nobody else is gonna want your dream to come true as bad as you. So you have to make it happen for yourself. So the fifth thing is you have to be ruthless. You have to realize that when you give in to certain things that seem like they're not gonna make a big difference or like they're not that big of a deal or you can wait till tomorrow and you'll just put these other things off until then, you are really giving up living your dream. You're giving up the time in your life that you have to fully immerse in who you wanna be in order to live the reality you wanna live. It's like when I cave in to refined sugar, that is my kryptonite. I sit there and I have a small slice of cake and I think this is fine, I'll be okay. But what I'm really doing is signing myself up for crazy because I know that sugar affects my dopamine levels and my dopamine levels affect my hormone levels and my hormone levels affect the way that I feel, my EQ, my mood, my energy levels. And I turn into this different person when I eat that sugar. I also notice that when I have sugar, I crave dopamine highs even more. So I'm more likely to scroll, more likely to crave, 
and less likely to be motivated to focus and do my work. Yes, I noticed this with just one serving of refined sugar. It is my kryptonite. Or how about being around people who have low energy or complain? They're nice people and you wanna support them, but you find yourself validating them because you're complaining with them. You say, oh, I totally understand how that feels. It's so ridiculous that gas prices are so high or people around this neighborhood don't know how to drive. And all of a sudden you're encompassing and embodying this character, this person that doesn't serve you or the way that you wanna live and be. It's always so difficult for me when I'm around people that I wanna just encourage and support and I don't wanna alienate them, but they consistently complain about the same thing over and over. It is such a tough spot that I end up feeling like I either need to compromise myself and my character or I end up making them feel alienated and misunderstood because I'm not joining in the complaint party. At the end of the day, this is not my obligation. What I'm obligated towards is showing up as my best self so I can be that person as a family woman, a businesswoman, and who I want to be in the life that I want to live. So I got to be ruthless. So that is my list of five realities that it takes to live your dream reality. If you aren't getting there or you feel like, eh, it's just so close, but something's missing. It's just not as fulfilling. Is there anything that you could be missing off this list? Let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you think I'm missing any realities that you have to face in order to live your dream reality. Thanks for being here. I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.